Hi, I'm Pastor Mike, and this is our series, Whom Do You Obey? Now, imagine the police coming into your house uninvited, suddenly and violently. We all recognize that doing so would be a violation of their authority and of your rights. It would be illegal. Any government cannot suddenly jump the boundaries of its authority and act unilaterally, interfering with the administration of other governments, self, church, or civil. So what gives one government the right and authority to interfere with the sovereignty of another government is a justification, a warrant. A police officer cannot enter your house without a warrant. A warrant is a document issued by a judge that gives police officers justification or authority for action to violate your authority over your person and your property. An officer of the law has to prove probable cause and be given permission from a judge to violate your authority over your own home and your own property. You have to have done something bad, that so bad, in fact, that it threatens the well-being of others or the general public, enough for the government to set aside your rights that it's supposed to protect, rights which are granted by God. These checks and balances protect us. They're good. They're glorious. Now, remember our first video, Derived Authority. What if, this, uh, what if the civil government is no longer a terror to bad conduct, but a terror to good conduct? Now, who issues a warrant to violate their sovereignty? When one government interferes with the operation of another, whether it's an emergency or not, in action relating to justice, it is called interposition. Interposition means to stand in the gap willingly, placing oneself between the oppressor and the intended victim. In the book of Ezekiel, God found no one to stand in the gap for Israel, which was beset by tyrannical, lying, self-interested leaders. We read in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 27 through 31. Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing prey, shedding blood, destroying lives to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have smeared whitewash for them, seeing false visions and divining lies for them, saying, Thus says the Lord God, when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land have practiced extortion and committed robbery. They have oppressed the poor and needy and have extorted from the sojourner without justice. And I sought for a man among them who should build up the wall and stand in the breach before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. There was no one to stand in the gap. Therefore, I've poured out my indignation upon them. I've consumed them with the fire of my wrath. I've returned their way upon their heads, declares the Lord God. Standing in the gap, standing in the gap, putting yourself in between an oppressor and an intended victim. That's what interposition is. So when a police officer hears screams from an apartment and barges in, they are placing themselves between an oppressor and a victim. If a husband is abusing his wife, the civil government or church government is warranted to interfere with the husband's authority over his own home. When a fireman rushes into a crowded worship service to empty the building that is on fire, then he is interposing between the fire and the worshipers. When a lower civil magistrate, say the Snohomish County Sheriff, refuses to enforce First Amendment violations by the governor, then he is placing himself between the victim and the tyrant. These are all forms of interposition. Interposition is when one authority positions themselves between an oppressor and the in, in, an intended victim of another authority. So, you might be wondering, am I saying that the governor has a right to violate our rights when it comes to worship and mask wearing, lockdowns, etc., because he is interposing between us and COVID-19? Now, a public health emergency is reason to limit rights, a warrant to interfere with the self-government of families, businesses, and churches. But it must be done carefully, thoughtfully, and in the face of a clear and present danger. There's no other, re <laughs> no other reason unless it is a clear and present danger. A civil government interfering with the God-ordained rights of its citizens is as serious and as dangerous as a public health crisis. Sometimes I wonder if we've lived too long in the land of the free to remember what it costs us, how dangerous it is to not be free. So this begs the question, everything I'm saying begs the question, are, are we currently in an emergency? Is there currently a public health crisis. It is reasonable that people would be confused about classifying COVID-19 at this point as a public health emergency. As the virus has spread and data has accumulated, however, we see clearly, clearly, if you look at the numbers, 
that the, not only were the initial predictions wrong, they were drastically wrong. While the death rate currently in the state of Washington hovers around 2.5%, we see that of those who contract the virus, 96% at least, if those numbers are accurate, will survive COVID-19. In fact, if you are under the age of 65, you are just as likely to die of COVID-19 as you are of dying in your daily commute. Add to these numbers the arbitrary nature of the shutdowns, the continual pushing back of the goalposts, the contradictory application of the orders, the state picking economic winners and losers, we can see that the clear and present danger is actually not from COVID-19, but from an overreaching government interfering in other governments without warrant, without justification. There are many well-known examples of interposition throughout history. But one very important one, one that we're all very familiar with, is the Continental Congress interposing on behalf of the colonies against the wicked King George of England in 1776. But in our own state, interposition is a well-known idea. Governor Inslee himself interposed on behalf of illegal immigrants by signing a sanctuary state law in defiance of the federal government and the, and the law of the federal government. Twenty county sheriffs, nearly half in the state, refused to enforce New Washington state gun laws interposing to protect citizens in their counties from Second Amendment violations by the Washington state government. These are clear examples of interposition. It is an effective tool of lesser magistrates stepping into the gap for its, for its citizens for overreach. Another example current, current is Pastor MacArthur in California, and he is interposing on behalf of his parishioners, protecting the crown rights of Christ, the sphere of sovereignty of the church, and the God-derived right, right to worship, just as Jehoiada did in 2 Kings 11. There are plenty of examples of the church interposing on behalf of citizens against the government. If the building is on fire, the civil government can interfere with the worship of the church. A police officer can invade your home if he hears screams. A lockdown that stops a worship service or Bible study or clears a neighborhood because there is an active shooter, these are all clear, reasonable warrants to interfere in other governments. These are all forms of interposition, good ones. In 1 Samuel 15, we see one of the earliest and one of the greatest examples of interposition that's very helpful for us to understand our own situation. Jonathan interposed on behalf of Israel when his father Saul made a vow to withhold food from troops. Fiercely hungry during the battle, the warriors were driven to eating animals with the blood in them, a clear violation of God's law, because they had been keeping the laws of men. Jonathan allowed the troops to eat, and it strengthened them, it kept them from sinning, and it gave them the victory. He interposed on behalf of Israel, and, and it was glorious in three different ways. It is a serious issue to interpose and resist the derived authority of another government. But the government of states and nations, counties and cities, churches and families, have to hold one another accountable. They have to. Authority is given to different leaders that overlap and correct corruptions, protecting us from one another's wickedness, from one another's overreach, from one another's tyranny. Fathers and policemen, Congress and the president, state governors and county sheriffs, interposing on behalf of others when you are in a position of authority interfering in the sphere of another authority is not the act of a scoff law if there is warrant to do so when one government has to intervene and violate the laws and authority of another government to protect someone from abuses of that government this is interposition it is dangerous it is very dangerous to interfere with the sovereignty of other spheres and it ought not be done flippantly manipulatively or cavalierly, interposing on behalf of others, protecting them from harm by suspending the rightful authority of a particular government must be done for the sake of safety and justice. But there must be a warrant. There must be a cause. There must be a clear and present danger. Thank you, and have a nice day.